Let's return to that story on coral health now with warnings emerging for reefs around the world of the worst mass bleaching event on record. Joining us with more is the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority's Chief Scientist, Dr Roger Beeden. Roger, thank you for joining us. Firstly, can you just describe for us what state Welcome. the reef is in now and how you're observing that things are progressing? So as has been reported, we have a mass coral bleaching event on the Great Barrier Reef. What that means is that there's widespread coral bleaching. We know that because, well, we were anticipating this would happen because there have been unprecedented temperatures in many parts of the Great Barrier Reef and actually, for that matter, around the world over the course of the past 12 months. We've conducted with partners from the Australian Institute of Marine Science aerial surveys of more than a 1,000 reefs um, spanning from right up the top in the Torres Strait all the way down to offshore from Bundaberg. And that shows us that there is extensive coral bleaching on many, many of those reefs. So probably about 70, 73% of those reefs are showing signs of coral bleaching. It's important to know that it's variable. It's not the same everywhere. It's probably the most significant in the areas where we've seen the most build-up of heat stress, particularly over the summer months. Roger, is that trend of bleaching, is that reversible or once the damage is done, is that it? So um, absolutely, it's not it. What, what happens with coral bleaching is that um, the coral animals that um, we know and love, they, they actually have a relationship with this little algae that's inside of their tissues, like our skin. And that algae is really important at providing their colour and their food. And what happens, but that relationship is temperature sensitive. So when temperatures are too high, they, they, they're a bit like Goldilocks. They like it to be warm, but not too warm. Um, and when temperatures are too high, that relationship breaks down. And so what we see with coral bleaching is that that the, the algae have been pushed out of the coral tissue. And at that point, the corals are still alive when they're bleached, but they can, um, some may die if they don't get the temperatures coming down soon enough to mean that they bring back that algae. So it's a, it's a really challenging, stressful state when they're, um, when they're bleached. But the reality is that many of them are not dead at that point in time. And it will, it will remain to be seen from in-water surveys what's happening in deeper waters and what's happening um, across different types of corals from this heat stress event. Roger, we all love the Great Barrier Reef. We'd love to see it restored to, to full health, not to mention the economic impacts. We know how important tourism is uh, along the coast there. What can the authority do to try and stop this situation getting worse? What options are available to you? Well, and we released um, over the past couple of days the snapshot that summarises the conditions I've just um, walked through. But the reality is that um, what has to happen in order to protect all of the world's reefs is that we need to take global action on climate change. We've made that very clear from the Marine Park Authority's point of view. But we can also take local scale action. So it's really important that we tackle things like the crown of thorn starfish um, outbreak that's been on the Great Barrier for a number of years, and we've had great successes with that. We're also looking at new technologies which will help to to rehabilitate particular reefs. So I'm actually at a conference at the moment, which is about um, bringing together the science know-how to actually enhance our ability to help to um, bring back the health of some of those some of those affected reefs. And it's also important that we have um, people know and comply with the rules around zoning, because because we which is the marine protected area rules, because we know that reefs that are fully protected are actually the ones that have um, are able to bounce back from these kinds of events. So it's a combination of things. People can also be careful where they put their anchors when they're out on the reef. Obviously, we don't want additional damage to reefs and also make sure they know about the, those particular rules. So it's a combination approach of how we reduce these local stressors and reefs have been are very adaptable um, what we um, we're working towards is supporting that natural ability to bounce back from impacts so that they can um, you know, have time to adapt to a changing climate. Dr Roger Beeden really appreciate you joining us to talk us through that and look best of luck with all your work appreciate your time thanks. Thank you.